Upshift isn't just a bodybuilding series. It's an opportunity for you guys to witness what happens when work ethic and passion combines. Last year, I took you along on the journey. This year, I'm gonna do the same, but even better. All right, guys, episode three, coming into 13 weeks out when you guys watch this. So we are in for pool today. So I'm gonna walk you through a little bit of a pool workout, probably do something similar to last time. And I'll do a bit of a voiceover, talking you through some of the cues, some of the, the ways in which I'm thinking when I'm structuring this session. And also something for, hopefully with every single movement, something for you to take into your own pool sessions. Obviously last year, I, talked heavily about how I think people were getting very caught up in you know using maybe a little bit too much machines being afraid to load the lower back being afraid to create fatigue and to be honest I'm still of the same mindset I still believe that a lot of people are just too afraid to do the things that are coined the hard stuff you know the barbell rows the single arm dumbbell rows uh, you know the, the, the conventional deadlift you know, people are always searching for something that might make more sense on paper, but there's a reason why some of these big, basic compound movements, rinsed and repeated over time, log books, progressed, have produced some of the best backs in the world, across natural bodybuilding, assisted bodybuilding, the whole realm. So there's a reason why they work, and you'll see within my programming, it's a balance between the two. It's not focusing on one side, like the perfect alignment, or the most perfect optimal exercise selection sequence is a balanced approach between the hard stuff and the methodical stuff. Okay, so both go together. Um, in terms of prep, so things are moving pretty smooth this week, already down to 176 pounds. So that's, since we last spoke, another two pounds off. This week, the goal is 176 to hit around about, so it'll be on track. And uh, I think we're slowly headed towards the point where that's less of a variable. So the scale weight will be get, getting pushed away a little bit and we'll be focusing more so on the two two weekly check-ins that we'll take. Um, and that will that will actually roll up in terms of frequency. So as I start to notice sort of like more frequent changes, we'll go to almost like daily check-ins. So we'll wake up, just take progress photos straight away and equally take progress photos pretty much after every training session. So that's really the run of the shop at the moment. Um, the food's pretty low, to be honest. Like getting close to bikini level dieting. Nah, not really. It's not like crazy low, but it's definitely low for me. I'm, I'm certainly, I'm progressing at a faster pace than I have before in terms of true weight loss. But as I've seen, I like, I remember listening to uh, Brett Freeman talk about his 2019 prep. And uh, Brett Freeman, if you don't know, is called Bathtub. On, uh, on Instagram because he takes all his progress photos with like, a bathtub behind him and he reaches some of the, the best conditioning I've ever seen and I've actually got some pictures with him from 2017 Worlds where we stood next to each other and uh, I remember him commending me on my condition at that show when I was a junior and he talked about how he pushed harder than ever with the food like lower than he thought was sort of safe so to speak for muscle retention in that prep and he got even leaner than he once had um, I think again this comes back to like, bodybuilders being a bit scared of uh, what like everyone talks now about rest recovery fatigue management don't get too tired don't push too hard don't overload the lower back too much make sure you deload every four weeks it's like yes that's smart and fatigue management plays its role and it's certainly an overlooked part of the bodybuilding prep and a lot of people just don't understand it enough to implement it but a lot of people are really riding that riding that kite a little bit too hard a little, I, I think I, I genuinely do believe that people can push harder than they think so you know the current two pound a, a week rate of loss for me is is yielding muscle retention is yielding performance retention as a result and uh, I, I do believe it's going to yield my best look this year so I mean we'll soon find out you know, if, if I was wrong, that I'll quite happily say that I was wrong. But right now, I believe the current trajectory, I'm on path to, to be uh, to be the best star I've ever been. So, yeah, we've laid out the session in our books. I'm having a, a black beverage, iced. 
Loz is uh, just having a pump today. She's overdone the caffeine. <laughs> so uh, no, no caffeine for her today. And uh, yeah, we'll crack into it. No fancy edits today. Just a little bit of a raw one again. And then we'll be back next week with Josh. Josh Boy and uh, he'll be uh, he'll be recording up a session for us in full edited streamlined fashion so we'll chat soon so, these these heavy compounds today the paused RDL really the work starts the battle starts on your second warm-up set when I unrack a weight that in the off season feels like absolute nothing and then like right now, down almost 30 pounds in body weight, feels considerably different. That's when you've got to say, wake the fuck up, get going. This is a weight you can move. If you, your internal dialogue is everything in your training, everything. So if you wake the fuck up and you can get after it, I guarantee you will look way different to your competitors on stage. If you're one of those people that messages your coach after every single session saying, today everything felt heavy, you're not strong enough up here, bottom line. If you're nailing everything outside of the gym to leverage performance, you haven't got what it takes mentally yet. It's a learned skill. I've been there, I've been there when I've said it's heavy, it's too heavy, stop complaining. Get on with it. All right guys, so pool day. This was a fantastic session. So we have the paused RDL in this rotation. This is the first exercise. After again, I didn't actually film it this time, but as the similar to leg day sort of mobility routine, we're talking primarily mobilizing the lower body, but we're also trying to mobilize the upper body as well a little bit, especially when we're trying to create tightness as across an RDL pattern or a hip hinge pattern. We want to make sure that pretty much everything across the, the, the upper back musculature especially is, is very, very ready to do its job. So you'll see with these, RDLs here that we are trying to spend a two count in the pause If anyone's ever done these you'll know that the two count in the pause always feels like about five minutes When you're in the set, but when you watch the video back, you're like, okay, that was about one second. So Yeah, they're hard. They're super super hard But they're something that if you struggle with tightness when you're trying to change direction on an RDL or uh, stiff leg deadlift that you could put in and see the benefits of for sure. I think a lot of people do struggle with understanding how to maintain tightness. And as you can see, that's my last rep. That's the set done. So once we see a significant amount of, of upper back or thoracic rounding, that pretty much signifies to us that, yep, the, the, set's, the set's done. The set's finished. Any more than that, we'd start to get into a little bit of a compromised position. Some thoracic rounding is at absolutely fine it's not a problem and again you'll see some thoracic rounding across these rows if you don't round your thoracic slightly in a row like this which is upper back focused you're not going to get a full stretch across your upper back so having some slight rounding there as long as you can still feel safe still feel stable still feel in control is not a problem whatsoever. And also, as long as it doesn't lead into, or as a byproduct or a domino effect, lead into any uh, lumbar rounding, so lower back rounding, that's when you're, you're definitely gonna get into some problems. So, yeah, and for me, if I don't stretch, if I don't round, I, I just do not get the same internal feel out of these movements. Like I need to be able to feel that slight stretch, allow my shoulder blades to be pulled forwards in row patterns like this where we are trying to focus on the upper back so you'll see the elbow finishing point here um, and just the overall uh, range of the movement is targeted for for the upper back as opposed to to lat i mean to be honest it's very difficult to make a dual arm dumbbell row in this kind of position lat focused you can do it but again you're going to have to sort of be a bit pink dumbbell with the form and i just don't think for a a, a bent over row it's, it's worth trying to prioritize the lats in a lot of circumstances. So one of my favorite movements there, to be honest, uh, the bent over dual arm dumbbell row. So uh, one set on the RDL, guys, and uh, two sets on, on the row today. Uh, they felt both brilliant. I think uh, the, the row, if, if Ramon is watching, I think, Ramon, you got like, what, 50 kilos for, for seven reps last session? That was about eight or nine there, mate. So 
some work to do for Ramon. <laughs> I don't know whether anyone else does that, but I, I definitely sometimes have lifts, which I, I know I should be fairly close to someone else on. And I just kind of do compare a little bit and then I'll, I'll end up trying to beat it by one or two. It's always nice to have a little bit of competitive nature within your training. So obviously at the moment, I'm not directly competing with Loz. Um, she's trying to catch me up on a few things, but uh, she is a little lighter than me and a little smaller. So I'm sure at some point she'll be ahead on some things. She's doing a great job at the moment. So as you can see, like actually one thing that's really important of note here is that we've really worked like, quite a lot on, on Loz's, Loz's accuracy with her back training. She, she has got a little bit of a... Uh, a weaker back compared to other body parts and and it's more so just weak because she's just struggled to train it properly really and that's pretty much why most body parts are weak guys it's the the fundamental baseline of improving a body part is how are you executing it on a ground level you know what does your your basic movement patterns look like can you activate what we're looking to activate so some cues here for for these pull downs as you can see the range is relatively short the, the lat itself doesn't have a massive range so we're working within the lats range funnily enough but also we've got a 15 degree angle away pretty much from from the cable stack we've got some slight supination from a what would be like a neutral grip so slightly supinated from that neutral uh, so that then the elbow path is nice and tight and close to the body and then we're thinking here about just cueing upper arm and elbow down. Now, um, biggest thing that you can do if you're training back today and you're watching this is when you do your pull downs, do not think about cueing back. Unless your goal is training the upper back with your pull downs, do not cue back. Cue down. Cue down with your, your elbow and your upper arm. And a lot of people just do think like they've heard the cue elbow to hip which is definitely a good cue, like there's nothing wrong with it, but it still makes them cue down because they're thinking of pulling down towards the hip, ra sorry, it still makes them cue back rather than down because the angle at which they've got their torso sometimes isn't correct. So if you think about keeping the upper arm and the, obviously the elbow, but the upper arm in front of the body and you cue them both down, you'll, you'll definitely get better lat connections. So just, just try that in your own training uh, when you go into your session today, regardless of, of what pull down you're using. Typically, a one way you can sort of get that slightly supinated grip from a neutral positioning, that's ideal uh, for keeping the elbow path nice and close. So then we moved on to, we did two sets on, on the pull down, by the way. Um, and you can either use those prime handles with D handles or you could buy like a gym pin, uh, one of those multi-grip gym pin attachments to sort of mimic that movement. So upper back row here, again, the elbow finishing point slightly higher. We're making sure that, especially with, with Loz here, she's, she struggled with coming into the stretch position and then the first thing that tends to move is the shoulder blades. So something we've, we've tried to cue with her is not packing them, but just trying to cue with the elbows rather than cueing with any movement around the shoulder joint. And these, these, were, these were really, really good on this day. So as you can see, the shoulder joint stays pretty locked. Uh, we're not thinking about packing or compressing there at all. We're, we're actually allowing it to pretty freely move. But the cue in the stretch is, is to, again, just cue with, with those elbows traveling rather than any, allowing anything at the, that shoulder joint. The chest supported here for, for, for this movement, primarily because we've already done a movement which is on chest supported. If we were to do another, our lower back would be uh, certified smashed. So we're going to avoid doing that for, for, for the rest of the session as we're coming into sort of the latter end now. I'm trying to keep the chest on the pad for as long as we can. Again, on a few final reps, you're going to want to create a leverage for a slight drop off because you're going to be fatigued. So you're going to want to leverage that position where you're going to get a slight drop off. Um, you don't want to do that from the start of, of the set, of course, because the, the load's just too heavy. But on the final few reps, you can start to sort of take yourself into that uh, slightly lent back position. Uh, as long as it doesn't compromise your lower back and as long as it is only for like one or two reps additional at the end of the set. We loaded that, that, that prime row actually in the middle pin. That's where I prefer to have it. Nice even resistance profile. Again, so just sort of working through the, the lats range here. Um, if anything, looking back on this as a critique for myself, I think I could have got my elbow positioning slightly further down. 
but these feel immense. So again, something that feels very, very good, might not always look perfect on paper, on your videos. Obviously, we can always search for, for little improvements. But for, for me, this, this was pretty much spot on. I think actually sometimes the, the bagginess of the, uh, the lovely Train by JP uh, sweater that I've got on here that sometimes hides where my elbow actually finishes. You can use AJ10, by the way, for, uh, for some discount. Yeah, so we did one working set here, I believe, because this was actually a slightly lower volume session for Loz, and I, by this point, was feeling like I'd done the work. I, you know, I didn't need more than one work set here today, so I just took one and uh, progressed on last week. So again, sometimes, uh, well, very often actually, I, I will auto-regulate my volume so it won't be the same sets and reps. Well, it won't be the same sets. Obviously, sometimes it's fluctuating in reps, but it won't be the same exact sets per session. Yeah, there, there sometimes will be things where I'll say to myself, you know what, today it's not going to be worth me me doing the, 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 the two sets here. Um, I may just do one. It's not going to be worth me doing three sets. I might do two. That's not as a cop-out. That's listening to the, the feedback cues that, that my body's giving me within the session and the, the feedback cues that are also within my logbook. So moving on to, to biceps and sort of the, the very latter end of the session here. So we've got the, the prime preacher curl. Again, I believe this was loaded in the bottom pin. Let me just see. Yes, I believe it was. Or maybe it was the middle pin. I think it was actually the middle pin. Um... So, yes, but this machine's fantastic. It's one of my absolute favorites. I think it was actually the bottom pin, sorry. So it was a challenge in the, the very end range. So right as you come into the, 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 the end of the range of motion, the contraction, that's where I've challenged that because you know, the bicep's not fresh. But in terms of the bicep work that we're doing, uh, we've, we've got sort of a challenge there. And then just a, a, a rope hammer curl, uh, something where we can get the alignment pretty, go pretty good of the joints without going single arm, so you know, time efficient. Uh, but also, I'm, I'm just using straps here, so I, I, some people may say, you know, oh, well, from a stability standpoint, why are you using those? You know, I might, might get better stability with the rope. Uh, I find the grip is absolutely fine. My forearms aren't weak at all. And if anything, we're, you're potentially getting a little bit of forearm work here, additional to, to getting some, uh, some, some more bicep work. So I really like these, you know, maybe give them a shot yourself, but it's literally just tying in my, my lifting straps into the uh, into cable, cable setup there. And then to, to finish off, we have uh, reverse pec deck. So Q here, I've actually not been giving you too many cues, so apologies. I think I gave you some cues for upper back and lats, so I think we've, we're clear on those. So reverse pec deck, one of the biggest things that people butcher is, again, um, they think back, not out. So just cue out here with your elbow path, and you will feel it in your rear delts a lot, lot better than when you start cueing back. If you start cueing back, and also if you use too much range, so pretty much a, a 90 degree angle from the shoulder joint to even the elbow joint, not even the wrist joint, to be honest, is, is where you want it for rear delts. Spend a little bit of time in the contraction. Um, I usually do a light, then a heavy, then a heavy uh, on rear delts. Uh, I always start light, though. Uh, it seems to be the best way to sort of get that internal feel cued. So then we're finishing off with the stretch. This is actually something I got from Cuba. Um, obviously, I believe that it will be passed down through other people um the weighted stretch but yeah this is something that i got from cuba and uh talking of cuba actually did he came came by at the end of the session here to uh give an in-person physique update here we're just uh actually just making sure that the, the fullness of of the ball sack hasn't decreased too much in the diet yet how was your session aj Fantastic. Interview time. It's yours. Oh, it's never good for Loz. I know, I can tell. She's yeah. miserable as fuck. facial expressions. <laughs> I don't want miserable. Honestly, you, every time I look at you, I feel suicidal. I feel sorry for you, AJ. <laughs> it's alright. She's happy, really. She's happy inside. She's happy inside. I'm actually very happy. Both Comment below how happy she is out of 1 to 10. <laughs> Over and out. All right, guys. So we're back home. Very productive pool session. And I thought I'd actually show you uh, what I get from Nutrifast. So Nutrifast do pretty much all of my meats 
and fish and all of my veg as well. So we've got all of my chicken for the week in here and then we've got Atlantic salmon, smoked salmon, which is uh, on my rest days. And then as you can see, we've got a lovely array, lovely array of, uh, of vegetables, yeah. So um, oh, they've given us some green beans this time, phenomenal. So uh, yeah, I get plenty of variety in my diet at the moment and I said it on my story a, a while back, but this is definitely the most like variety that I've ever had ever in terms of like fruit and vegetable selection. So blueberries, raspberries, loads of different greens. Um, and I, I definitely feel that the best that I've ever felt in terms of just day to day energy. Um, it's just everything to be honest uh, from an overall well-being perspective. So I'm looking forward to actually just continuing to having this kind of diversity even when, when you know, prep's done and, and off season calories come back again. And hopefully my appetite sustains enough to enjoy these kind of things. Because right now, this is really enjoyable. Like vegetables are really enjoyable. And I do actually kind of like this phase of prep where the hunger is is, is there and present. So post-workout meal, uh, at the moment it's actually 100 grams of oats and 250 grams of fruit and 40 grams of whey. The reason why I actually changed to oats, which is not your atypical post-workout meal, a lot of people would be like, why are you having oats? They're slow to digest or they're high in fat. Um, so, I mean, first and foremost, like the, the fact that they are a little bit slow to digest is just helping me with satiety at this stage. And for the amount of oats I'm actually having, there's only eight grams of fat and the rest of the meal contains none. So the whole total fat intake for that meal is eight, which is actually still very, very low for a, for a post-workout meal. Uh, so it's not like I'm having, you know, fattier cuts of beef or fish or anything like that in a post-workout window. Um, but yeah, I've typically found that this has actually created a lot more satiety. Um, and I've got that a little bit, or got some of that sort of principle, I guess, from, from watching a lot of John Jewett recently. And his calories have, have gotten very, very low in his preps. And he's taken, like, very smart strategic moves to create a lot of satiety throughout his day. So uh, that's pretty much how I'm structuring my food when it, when it is this low. So yeah, good good session today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and enjoyed the session itself in terms of it being educational towards your pool sessions. Um, hopefully you've taken something from, from this one. And uh, as always, we'll catch you soon. Cheers, guys.